Welcome to my channel, Shavers and Shavettes. I hope you are all well. Today I have for you another in the Trash 2 Lather series. Let's take a look at the gear using a very inexpensive and, to me, very good value brush from Yaki. I think I bought this one from West Coast Shaving. They do seem to pop up on Amazon every now and then. It looks like another brand has rebranded the handles, but they appear to be the same if they are very good value. Using a very simple razor from USR, this style of razor, kind of that single piece of sheet metal folded over to grip the blade, was sold by several different manufacturers. It was created by Guy Osborne, or maybe it's Guy Osborne, but several companies did go ahead and sell under their brand. And of course, the star of our show, the Renly Shave Soap, or as it was sold by the Renly Shave Bowl, being sold in the Weldon Bowl. A lot of bowls going on with this shave soap. We'll take a look at the insert that tells us why they're pushing the bowl so much. There are two cardboard inserts underneath the ring on top. There's the first one. We know we bought our, weld, our Renly Shave Bowl. And as soon as I get smart and flip this around, you can pause the video if you'd like to read it in more detail, but what you are buying is a little bit of soap that comes in a handy dandy ashtray. Definitely a product of its time. Now we've got lather cam coming in again. When I zoom up, it looks like the bowl is extremely full. That soap, it does have a bit of a dome on top that goes almost to the very top of the bowl. That dome, however, is just a very thin shell of soap that kind of wedges into the sides of the bowl. The shell itself is no more than about a half an inch wide at any given point, and it's very consistent from the center to the edge with how wide it is. So you did get to buy a little bit of soap, but primarily this feels like the type of thing that was maybe a Father's Day present. Uh, maybe the kids didn't make ashtrays in art class for their for their dads back then. Maybe they just bought them a little bit of soap, but here you go, dad. Here's a nice new ashtray for you. Now, being a product of its time, let's talk about that for a minute. The shave soap itself, I have not been any, able to find any detail, any advertisements or anything that would really give us a comfortable timeline as to when this soap was made. But with the Weldon Shave Bowl, I was able to find the patent information uh, thanks to the engraving at the bottom of the bowl. Now, on the cardboard insert, the information on the Weldon Shave Bowl did say patent was applied for. On the bottom of the bowl itself, we saw that the patent was granted or awarded, however you get a patent, uh, and it gave us the patent number. The application was put in on October 26, 1944, and the patent was official on January 23rd, 1945. So the printing and the manufacture of the bowl, if we get kind of a rough estimate of when the soap was made, probably sometime in 1945, perhaps 1946, uh, with as little as I can see about the actual Renly shave soap or the Renly bowl, I don't think this was a shave soap or the bowl I don't think it was around for very long. So I think sometime in 1945, perhaps even into 1946, I feel comfortable saying that uh, is when the soap was made. Now, into performance, it is a very nice, hard, old soap. There is no scent remaining in the, uh, in the puck that I have. Again, without being able to find any information on the original soap, I don't know what scent it had when you first bought it or if it had any distinct scent or if it was just really be, being sold as something to move a, a shave bowl ashtray. No scent remaining except for an old musty soap smell, which is to be expected from a soap made in approximately 1945. Performance wise though, it is very slick. It does stay and I I think you could kind of see throughout the video here. Sometimes it's hard to judge the lather in a video, but it does stay very airy. It does like to start to disappear a little bit throughout the shave. 
but that's okay with me because it retains its slickness. It still stays very slick, even as the lather starts to disappear a little bit. You can certainly go over the same place more than once without having to be careful to re-lather because that, that slickness stays on the face. Now, the way that I loaded it, as you've seen in my videos many times, I start with a relatively dry brush start to load the brush on top of the soap. I don't ever soak or bloom or do anything with water to the soap beforehand, but I just start to swirl the brush around until it doesn't look like I'm getting any more soap. Once it looks like I'm just kind of pushing around the paste that I've got, I'll do a quick dip of the tips of the brush into water and repeat the same process, depending on the brush, depending on the soap, I might do that two times, three times, maybe even more until I feel like I have enough soap loaded up into the brush to complete my shave. I like to do a three pass shave. I don't know that I need to, but I enjoy it. Yeah, so as far as the performance of the soap goes, I think it's pretty representative of what the average soap is out there that you might find today. I don't know if the performance for any of these old soaps has changed due to their age. I don't know what they were like when they were new compared to now, of course. This one, though, I would feel pretty good to say if you came across a Renly Shave Soap offer for a reasonable price. If I were to buy this again, I'd probably keep it at about the $10 mark, whether it came with the bowl or not. It, you can decide, though. If you come across some Renly Shave Soap, if you feel comfortable with the price being charged, knowing that there's no guarantee that you will like the soap, I would say go ahead and pick it up. It's going to give you a different experience than a modern soft soap, especially. It does stay very airy, very foamy, even compared to other hard soaps, either new or vintage. But when it comes down to it, the performance, I think it's right up there with any other quality shave soap that you could buy in the past or today. So I think that's about it as far as the soap. This razor, we'll talk about that a little bit. As you saw earlier too, the, the razor itself is really just a folded up piece of sheet metal. The handle is the same type of metal, just curled into a tube, welded somehow, brazed onto the, to the head, and you slide in the single edge blade and it just kind of pinches it there in place as you can imagine extremely lightweight razor it's a little tricky to use because of how light it is i prefer a heavier razor especially where the head has the bulk of the weight i like the center of balance to be a little bit further away from the head towards the bottom of the handle i like to just let the pressure of the head itself be all that's needed to shave, not adding any additional pressure. This one, yeah, it's all over the place. It, Because of how light it is, it does have a tendency to bounce a little bit, if that makes sense. Um, if I come in at not quite the right angle, luckily, there's not a lot of mass behind that to, to cause damage. So occasionally it will bounce off my face a little bit have to use this one extremely flat to my face which is a little bit of getting used to compared to some of the other single edge razors that I use but again well worth the effort well worth the investment in, in time to learn how to use this razor properly this is another one if you have already used single edge razors whether it's one or multiple if you come across a USR or any of the other branded razors of the same style, I would say go ahead, pick it up again. Make sure it's at a price point that you feel comfortable spending, knowing that there's no guarantee that you will enjoy the razor. For me, they work really nice. I'm happy with this one. Of course, I found it locally for very inexpensive. I don't know what... Uh, what type of price you might expect to see on eBay or anything like that. If you've never used a single edge razor before, I would recommend not to choose this for your first one. Go with something a little more 
I don't, I don't know if traditional is the right word, but something like a micromatic, something like one of the gem lather catchers, something a little more intuitive to use. This one does take a lot of getting used to, or at least it did for me, if for no other reason than because of how extremely lightweight it is. And just like the soap, I don't have a whole lot of extra information on the razor. When they were made, if there was a time range, the patent, the original patent from Mr. Osborne, you can still look that up and see information on the original patent. The award date was sometime in 1910, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't seen anything more specific on either the USR version the Sharp Shaver version, or any of the other branded versions of this basically folded razor as far as when they were manufactured. Most of what we use to identify these old products are advertisements. What's the earliest date we see an advertisement for a specific razor or for a specific soap? What's the latest date we see an advertisement for the same thing? Can we see any changes? I haven't come across any for this type of razor, so who knows? Just because the patent was won in 1910, that's not an indication as to when something was actually made when it comes to razors. A lot of razors have early patent dates but were made for up to decades after that patent was awarded. With this one, I don't know. I'm going to say 1910 is probably extremely early for an estimate on this one. I, I think it was made much later than that. As I wrap up the shave, it was a very nice shave indeed. Wonderful soap, wonderful razor. I really enjoy finding these old products that I don't know anything about and trying to do some research. Even if it's just finding a patent, finding a manufacturer date, I enjoy that side of the shave hobby. As always, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me today. I truly do appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.